In this tutorial, we're going to be adding a timer for when we're recording. Some of you might find this useful. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, I'm going to preempt some of your questions after the last tutorial where we're actually doing the recording. I'm sure some of you, or even most of you, are going to want to know the elapsed time of your recording. Quite a common request, so I'm happy to oblige in advance for this one. And for the setup, it was actually quite straightforward because Android OS does provide us with a very useful view called a chronometer, I believe, chronometer view. Um, that we can use exactly for this. So it doesn't involve too much work for this. Anyway, let's make a start. Okay, so I've gone into my layout XML file here. Uh, first thing I want to do is to add that new view, the chronometer view. Um, I think I'll put it above my record button. And I only want it to go on. I only want the, meter, uh, the recording elapsed time to show when I'm in recording mode as well. So take a note of that. So go into design first. Okay, I, I have updated my um, libraries and my SDK build environment. So I am getting a preview of the next release of Android. And I'm getting this error here. It's saying unsupported major minor. To fix that, if you do happen to see it, if you see this little Android symbol here, and you've got to be in the design tab here to actually see this. If you see this Android with a big N, N for whatever the next release of Android is going to be, um, select the next one down. So that's API 23. So that's in preview. We can just go to 6.0. Let's go, let's just go for Marshmallow. And that resolves that issue, if you happen to see this issue, which I unfortunately did. Okay, so here it is here, we're going to add a, um, a view called the chronometer, so we have to find that first. Keep on scrolling down. So it lives under date and time here, and it's called the chronometer. So we'll just drag that in here and try and get some positioning. Okay, I want this position here, I want it sort of above and aligned up alongside, or aligned up above, above the uh, record button here so I'll just keep that as there so I think I'm happy with that now I'm going to select my text tab and go back in here and we can see this position here the code's been nicely laid out for us I'm going to keep the ID as it is because I'm not going to be adding any more chronometer views so we can keep that but I am going to add a few more fields here okay the first one is I want to make it invisible so set the visibility to invisible. Okay, the next one here is I want to set the text lapse time. I'm just going to want to put it in red, just so hopefully we'll notice it. Text color, and I believe, don't quote me on this. I believe F F zero 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 is red. And lucky enough, if you look to the left here, this gives us an indication of the color for the text. Thank you, Android Studio. Handy feature. Okay, and I'm going to set text size here. I'm just going to hard code and evaluate you just, just for demonstration. So text size, and I'm going to set it to 25 dp. Okay, so that's about all the changes I'm going to make to my layout file. Let's go into the source code. So first thing I want to do is I want to set up a member to represent in the source code my chronometer. And I think I'll put it below the media recorder. So sort it of makes sense to put it there. And it's going to be a chronometer. And I'll just call it member chronometer ok 
Okay, now I want to initialize this uh, member here with the values from our XML file. And same as always, go into onCreate method. And I'll initialize it just above the texture view. It's m chronometer equals, we need to cast it as you normally do. And find the view. It's not showing up as autocomplete, but I memorized the name and so it worked. Not too sure that's an issue with possibly Android Studio there. Okay, so we've now initialized our member with the value set in the XML file. Okay, so the next step here is to actually turn it on and then turn it off. Okay, so we turn it on and when we start recording, don't we? So if we go to the very bottom of the source file here, if we cast our minds back, it's in this check write storage permissions um, method where we actually do the recording here. So basically, I think after media starts, I can turn on my timer. And the first thing I want to do is to set the base. And this is going to set our time as the current time. It's a timer that sort of bases its value on the current time. So um, we give it the current time, which will be zero, and then start counting out. And to get the current time, it's system time. I'll call the system clock and it's elapsed real time. And also a good idea we're going to need to make, we're going to want to make our um, timer visible now. I'm calling set visibility and making it visible. And now we'll actually start the timer itself. And we're going to have to do this in two other places as well. So let's just save this code. And we'll have to do it in here for versions older than Android. Uh, older than Android Marshmallow, I mean. And let's just search for start. And inside here, if you're installing the device for the first time and you're checking for the runtime permissions, we'll need to put the code in here as well. I do go into explanations on this in the set storage tutorial part tutorial episode of the series okay and that should be fine but once we've turned on our timer we'll have to turn it off again so if we go back to on create and in this portion of the statement and here's where we actually turn it off so I'll probably just put it at the top here so M chronometer and it's just a simple matter of calling stop it's quite a simple a library to use and after we've stopped the chronometer we can remove it off the display it's not relevant anymore we, we don't need it if we're not recording so we'll make it invisible again by calling set visibility again so in this case it'll be invisible okay so well we might as well try running this and see what happens Okay, applications now started up. Let's record that. Okay, so let's select, select record. As you can see, with time is now coming up. It's counting up in seconds. It's a short recording and stop that. And as you can see, we make the timer disappear because we don't necessarily need it running if we're not recording. Okay, that concludes this episode of the Android video application series. So what we just learned in this tutorial was how to use the chronometer view. And we saw it's pretty easy to use and install and very convenient for stopwatch or timer sort of applications such as what we wanted to demonstrate in our video application. 
So if you want to get notified of the following tutorials to this, the following episodes to this, or any other tutorials series that I'm working on, don't forget to click on the subscribe button just right below me now. And surrounding me is all my social media accounts, so that's when you can stay up to date with all the latest news and events from a mobile application tutorial. So if you're keen on any of those, I've got Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus and Pinterest accounts as well. And don't forget, directly above me is a link to my website. So you can watch the video from my website and you'll also have the supporting documentation down below, which sort of this gives brief descriptions of all the code changes made as well. And there'll also be a reference of where you can get the code from GitHub once it's uploaded there. Anyway, that's it for this one. Bye for now.